Hey guys, Dave Pitchin 3D Tech here. Today, we're going to be checking out the Fantech Aria XD7. It's a very exciting new mouse with some really premium features at a very affordable price. So without further ado, let's get into it. First off, I'd like to thank Fantech for sending out this review sample. I've had it for a couple weeks now and I've been able to put it through the paste and give a nice honest review of this mouse. And to start off, we're going to go over the box and uh, what comes in it. Um, so the mouse right here, and this is with the solid shell on it. And then of course, uh, this is the uh, honeycomb shell, which is about a one to two grams difference. You do get a set of extra PTFE feet and a nice pair of uh, grips. A user manual in a bunch of different languages. Some stickers. And then of course you get the uh, USB-C cable with a adapter for the USB dongle and it says uh, Fantech on it in white. It's a, a decent paracord cable and when I've had it plugged into the mouse it's I mean it's not the world's best but it's actually pretty decent so you won't mind it too much if you have to plug it in to be able to use it and for the reviewers they also sent this extra eSport Tiger Tiger ice skates for the uh, for the Aria this should be available on uh, AliExpress I believe and perhaps some of the other resellers may uh, carry this in the future since this was a pretty popular selling mouse um, you might be able to find it on Addis and Lethal Gaming Gear and then maybe the Yolanda shop in, uh, and Max Gaming in Europe. Uh, anyways, I haven't tried these yet, but when I'm done with the review, I'll probably put these on because these are definitely, for PTFE feet, Tiger Ice Skates uh, are my favorite, really. And we'll quickly go over the uh, stats that are listed on the box. It's, of course, the, the brand new Pixart 3395 sensor which is the latest and greatest uh, wireless sensor. It's very energy efficient, top of the line for sure. And then uh, it has KL 8.0 switches and a TTC gold encoder on the scroll wheel. And then it does have software, which I will go over uh, later on in the video. And on the box, it, it claims 59 grams. And I believe that is for the black version of the mouse because white paint does add a little bit of weight and for the honeycomb on the uh, on the black mouse. I don't have the black one, so I can't confirm that it's 59 grams, but with the solid shell on the white mouse, it's 62, 63 grams, somewhere in that range. It's like right in between, I believe. And with the uh, honeycomb shell, uh, the white one is 61 grams. I think it's about a one to two gram difference between the black and the white ones. There are also, um, shells available on AliExpress. I've seen white and black and I believe there's going to be some other colors available soon. So quickly I'll go over uh, just swapping out the shell. You just basically there's a little groove right here. Comes right off it's it's held on with these little magnets and I can say that the magnets are pretty sturdy even though they're really small and they, they don't seem to add a whole lot of weight. The uh this also comes off the front, and like I said, on AliExpress, you can buy different color top buttons for it. But that's it. I mean, it just snaps on, much like a, a Ponage mouse. So it's very similar, but this is even easier. And there's no rattle. It, it's super solid. Build quality on this mouse is actually really solid. You couldn't be easier to swap those shells. Oh, and uh, I almost forgot. Uh, there's a spot to store your dongle right here for people who like to be able to transport their mouse and have a place to put it, or they just want to put their mouse up and they don't want to lose their dongle. So shape-wise, this thing is going to get compared mostly to the uh, Razer Orochi V2, which it does have some similarities, of course. Um, but the other mouse that it's also very similar to is the Logitech G305 or G304. Basically, if those two uh, mice had a baby, 
you would have the Fantec Aria. Even though it does look similar. So here's the Orochi. I don't have a 305 or 304, but I do have the Orochi V2. You can see the shapes are similar. As you can see, the Aria is quite a bit longer. It's also thicker and fuller than the Orochi. It fills out your hand uh, much, much better. I always felt that this is a little too small for me personally. While I do like the mouse, it's just a little too small. Also, the Orochi has removable batteries. And of course, this has an internal battery like most modern mice. The other mouse I have that it's also very similar to is the Deluxe M820 DC, which is kind of in between these two mice shape-wise. And I also like this a little bit more than the Orochi because, again, the Orochi is just a little bit too small for my hands. This is more of a budget mouse, though, and uh, I will have a review on it soon because I've had a lot of questions on this mouse. I do like it, especially for the money, but you'll see that the uh, the Aria is far superior to any of these mice, especially for the uh, price. There's a nice size comparison from the top view. And then here's a comparison from the bottom. As you can see, the uh, Orochi, the sensor is towards the front. And on the, uh, the Deluxe mouse, it's actually a little bit towards the rear. And then on the Aria, it's pretty much dead center. Here's a close-up of the bottom. As you can see, it's got some nice uh, PTFE feet. I think they're actually like Tiger Arc feet, to be specific, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, the other nice thing is that this does support Bluetooth. It's got the switch right here for Bluetooth to the left and then to the right, uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, the DPI button is down here, which I kind of would have liked to see it on the side or the top just for a little bit more easy access, but it's not a deal breaker that it's on the bottom. You don't accidentally hit it and you could always remap one of the buttons if you have to have a button on the way you change it on the fly. And then of course the uh, Bluetooth buttons right there. And then right up here, we have an LED indicator light, which is for the DPI. And as you can see, as you change the DPI, uh, the color changes depending on what the, uh, the setting you have it set to. And as you can see, the score wheel has some rubber texture to it. It does get things caught in there, as you can see, but it's not that hard to clean. Now this is an ambidextrous mouse, but it only does have the side buttons on the left, which is a, a trend on a lot of the new mice in order to cut down on weight. Uh, another th interesting thing is it has this little plate here with the name and apparently you can get these uh, 3D printed and I think they have the plans for these. If I find the plans, I'll post it in the description. But a lot of people ask me if this feels uncomfortable or if it catches your finger and I'm happy to report you don't really feel it at all uh, and I actually kind of like the way that it looks it gives a little bit more of a premium look to it another thing is you'll see there's quite a big gap right here along the buttons and you would think that that would give it a lot of play but you can see there's just a little bit of play on the buttons there's really just a little bit of pre-travel and just a tad on the post travel. It's really minimal. I thought it would actually be a lot worse from the look of the gap, but the clicks are very nice and satisfying. I think you'll enjoy them quite a bit. It's actually the best implementation of KL 8.0s that I've personally experienced. And I was a little skeptical on them because I'm getting a little tired of KL 8.0s and I like to see other ones. And of course, we got a USB C port right here. Again, it's pretty standard now. The side buttons are really nice and they're really easy to hit while in game. I didn't have any problems whatsoever. They're also very clicky compared to most uh, side buttons. I'm not sure what the switches are, but they're really nice switches. I, I think they might be Hano switches, but I'm not exactly sure. They weren't on the box. But they're some of the best uh, side button switches I've experienced on just by any of my mice. Uh, there's a little bit more pre-travel than there is post-travel, but it's not terrible. And again, it's got some nice large PTFE feet. And I, I very much found that the stock feet were really nice and I didn't have any problems. There's not a big reason to change them out. There's some of the nicer PTFE feet that I've 
had on a mouse recently, uh, but I'm definitely going to try out those uh, Tiger Ice skates to see if they're any better. And maybe at, at some point somebody will make some glass uh, feet for this mouse also. And I would definitely try that if somebody does do that. And here's a sound test. Size-wise, as, as I described, it is larger than the Orochi, and I would classify this as a medium-small mouse, somewhere in between medium and small. But it does really fill out your hand quite a bit. So if you like the feeling of the mouse filling out your hand, then you'll probably love this mouse. If you don't like that feeling, then it might fe feel too big for you, perhaps. I know one person who has really small hands found that this mouse is too big for him but for the most part everyone else who I know has tried it who even has large hands has really enjoyed this mouse. I think it's a shape and size that will work for most everyone unless you have really teeny tiny hands uh, and, and even then you could probably palm the mouse but that may be not what you're looking for so you'd probably want something smaller than this. And to give you the specific uh, size settings it's 114 millimeters by 65 millimeters by 39 millimeters just in case you were wondering. To give you a little bit of uh, background on Fantech, uh, they've been around a little while and they're a Chinese company that makes a lot of different peripherals and other computer parts. And their goal is to produce uh, quality products for a more affordable price. And one of the nice things that they do do is they do sell their products for even cheaper in parts of Asia where there's people that just simply can't afford a mouse that you or me might be able to afford. So an $80 mouse, a $100 mouse might just be out of their price range. So they've tried to make their mice a little bit more affordable. So this mouse right here is an unbelievably low price of $68 MSRP. You may find it on some resellers for a little bit more, I've been told. But $68 is what I've seen it for so far. And I have seen it as low as $50. And I believe... In some countries like the Philippines, you might be able to find it lower. Again, they're just trying to get quality uh, gaming products in the hands of, of gamers all around the world, no matter what their budget is, which is an admirable thing. I, I do know that some other companies may feel threatened by a company like Fantech because they're undercutting them. But let's be honest, some com companies like Logitech and Razer, while they do put a, a lot of money into research and development and also tend to use uh, high quality parts at $150 plus. That's just uh, out of the affordable range of even most American gamers, even though they do sell quite a bit still. It's just, I believe that's just a lot of money and a lot of people in foreign countries aren't going to be able to afford that for sure. So, but of course there are other companies like Pulsar, for example, that's selling quality mice in the $80, $90 range and Ninjitsu and there's a bunch of others. And Fantech has always tried to sell their flagship mice like the uh, XD5 and XD3 V2 in the uh, $60 range. And they tried really hard to keep this as close as possible to that. And they only had to raise it just a little bit to $68, which uh, honestly, I was expecting this mouse to be in the $80 range. So I was quite surprised when it was only $68. And when I actually started telling people, they thought I was pulling their leg. They didn't believe me that a, a brand new mouse with a 3395 sensor could be that inexpensive. Again, some other companies might be feel threatened and think that they're undercutting them, but I think that there's a market room enough for everyone to compete. There's plenty of reason to pay 80, 90, 100 dollars for a different mouse than this one and and still be happy with that purchase and not feel like you're being ripped off. Now, I do think anything over 120 is starting to get in the ridiculous range. And I'm not a big fan of those mice uh, in that range, personally. 
120, I think, kind of is the limit, unless there's just really something special about that mouse. But I do have a couple mice that are more expensive than that, and I've got a couple that are coming, and I will review them. But again, personally, I think 120 or below is where you should be uh, spending your money on a mouse. Now, I've heard rumors about this uh, mouse for the last few months, and I had a feeling that that this was going to be a pretty good mouse. Uh, it really wasn't on a lot of people's radar, but everything that they've told me in the past has pretty much been true. And when they said they had a uh, a killer mouse for a killer price coming out, they didn't tell me exactly any of the details like on the specs, but I could kind of like surmise that it was going to be possibly a 3395 sensor and it would be a, a new shape from what they've sold in the past, which for them, this is a new shape. And, and like I said, while it is similar to other shapes, it really is its own shape. And I, I really do enjoy this shape quite a bit. Now, as far as grip styles, you can easily fingertip this mouse. At least I can. I have just for reference, I have a 19 by 10 centimeter hands and I don't have any problem whatsoever. And the other amazing thing about this mouse is it is one of the most weight balanced mice I've ever felt. When you just feel it, even though this is 63 grams, it, it feels much lighter than that just because of the weight balance. You just have to get it in your hands and you'll see what I mean. Uh, you can also do, well, I think the relax claw is my favorite. The back of the mouse just hits you in the palm and then locks in and then it really helps with the aiming for me. I really enjoy how it fills out my hand. And, and honestly, I felt like this mouse is made exactly for someone with hands my size. And if you have similar size hands as me, I think you're really gonna enjoy how it fits your hand and you'll be able to pretty much use any type of grip style that you enjoy using with this mouse. Again, I can, I can palm it, I can claw, and then I can fingertip. See, when, I, when I'm palming it, my, my fingers really don't hang over, but on the uh, Orochi, you can see my fingers hang over quite a bit, and it just doesn't feel natural. On the Deluxe, they hang over just a little bit, but I, I can still palm it if that's uh, what I choose to do, but I pretty much uh, relax claw or fingertip this mouse also, which, by the way, this is a little bit heavier. It's in the... Uh, I think it's 70 or 71 grams and you can definitely feel how dense it is but for the money it's still a pretty good mouse now as far as gameplay and how this thing actually performs uh, first of all it's just a really good overall mouse and if you want to use this thing for productivity it's really good for that uh, I find it to be just a great overall mouse perfect for productivity and as far as gaming Man, this thing is so amazing for, for me at least, I will say that. For me, this is my new main. Uh, until I find something better, this is probably what I'll be using. And I know I've said that in the past, but wow, this thing really impresses me quite a bit. And it's just the perfect size for my hand. And as far as performance, I perform really well. And when you're tracking with this mouse, uh, with the new sensor, it just performs really, really well. You just lock on and you don't lose the target. I've had zero sensor issues with this. Uh, no spin out on any of my mouse pads. I tried it on a bunch. This right here is the uh, new Yuki Aim control pad. I'll have a review on that soon, by the way. And it's not a bad mouse pad and this combination works really well, actually. I've been playing a lot of Valorant with this lately. And while I, I'm not a great Valorant player by uh, any any stretch, I definitely saw a, a marked improvement using this mouse for sure. Uh, uh, battery wise, uh, a full charge on this lasts you about three or four days of heavy use. One of the things I, I love most about this is just the buttons are very spammable, very clicky. The scroll wheel feels really nice and tactile. Side buttons are the best of just about any mouse I've ever tried. Shape is perfect. And like I said, it, it just, it's just a banger in games. Now, uh, I guess let's check out the software. It does have some uh, decent software that comes with it. it. I believe this software is very similar to other companies like Ponage. It's, it's basic, but it, it does the job. And uh, anyways, let's check out the software. All right, here's the uh, software for the Fantech Aria. Again, it's 
uh, pretty basic, but it's got a nice clean interface. Uh, as you can see, you can adjust the, uh, the different buttons with the drop down menu. You can select different things. You got four different profiles. Uh, right here, you got the debounce time goes all the way down to zero. And when you change the tab, it pretty much saves it. Uh, there's battery indicator right here. Uh, you can export or import profiles. Uh, right here, you got the different DPI settings. You can just change the slider. DPI effect, you can change. Right now, it's set to breathing. Or you can change it to steady or off and the speed. And it, and basically, it just affects how this looks right here, the DPI button. Uh, LOD, you can set it to one millimeter or two millimeters. And the ripple control and angle snapping, I recommend you not use those. Uh, over here, the uh, polling rate uh, comes set as default 1000 hertz. Good job because sometimes they show up at 500 so they can brag about the battery life. But gaming wise, you're definitely going to want to use 1000 hertz, which will definitely use more power, but uh, that you should be using anyways. Just plug it in at night and you don't have to worry about the battery. Uh, and then macros if you're interested. But that's really about it. You just. Uh, Make your changes and save and that's it. So anyways, I'm extremely surprised by this mouse. I wasn't expecting it to be a, a shape that I enjoyed so much. Man, and just the inner tech that's in this mouse for $68 is incredible, I think. It's just such a good deal for a, for a gamer. It, it's really a mouse that should be in everyone's collection. Uh, not only is the, uh, the price of this mouse amazing, they actually made it to the market first. Uh, this is the first 3395 sensor that made it out to the market. Uh, the X2 and X2 Mini from Pulsar will be out uh, any day now. Uh, if it isn't already out by the time you see this review. And there was uh, samples, of course, that showed up before this, but to some reviewers. But those were pre-production samples. And I actually have a retail sample of either one or both. I'm not sure yet, but I think it'll be here in the next day or two. So I'll definitely be excited to check out those two mice because uh, Pulsar is definitely one of my favorite companies. And for the price, those are amazing mice. But specs wise, it, they're very similar to this mouse right here at $68. And I think because of that, this mouse actually sold out when it, they opened it up for pre-orders within like two minutes, which completely shocked them. They weren't expecting to sell at all, let alone in two minutes. I had actually just gotten the uh, the mouse uh, earlier that morning at the time of the pre-sale and I only got to use it briefly but I was already super impressed by it and I know Fresh from Press Reviews have been using it for about a week. Uh, somehow mine got held up in customs for a week otherwise I would have already had it. Uh, but he is also very impressed with it and whenever you see him on a stream this is the mouse that he's using. and. It's also the mouse I've noticed he performs best with. And he has large hands, so like I said, even if you have large hands, this mouse is probably a good mouse for you. While there was only one review, I didn't have time to just try and pump out a quick review. I wanted to give it a good week of testing or so before I did this review. But I did post on Reddit, and I believe that post cut like 55,000 views, and I answered probably like 75 questions uh, leading, up to the, leading up and after the uh, pre-sale and answer as many questions as I could. And man, they just sold out and then people were begging for more. They uh, started selling them on their website. And I think you might still be able to get it directly from there, but I also know it's available on AliExpress now. And I believe there's some free uh, shells that come with that also. So I think if you got the white one, you get the black shells. And if you have the, the black one, you get the white shells. Now I'll go ahead and put order links in the description for every place that I have seen this for sale. So depending on when you see this review, there it may or may not be in stock. Uh, initially it was in stock on Amazon and sold out there and I believe they'll keep stocking there on Amazon because they typically sell their products uh, on Amazon and AliExpress are the main places you can get it. And it may be available a couple other places. And like I said, I'll just keep putting them in the description if you see this review later and you're still wanting to purchase this mouse. But I just wanted to reiterate that, that Fantech, they are a very uh, passionate company and I thought they'd be very excited about selling out, but they were actually upset because they knew that there was a bunch of people, a bunch of gamers that wanted this mouse 
and they weren't able to get it because it sold out. And that disappointed them that they underestimated the demand for this mouse and didn't produce enough. But they're working really hard to try and make a bunch more to get them in the hands of gamers who actually want this. So if you do want this and it's not available, be patient. They are making more and I think it's worth the wait. Now, like I said, there's a bunch of other awesome 3395 sensor-based mice that are coming out. I'm very excited to check them all out. Uh, Lamzu uh, has a mouse that's uh, coming my way any day. I'm going to be checking that out. Uh, Vancer has two mice with the 3395 that will be out in a couple weeks, hopefully. And I'll be checking those out also. Of course, we got in-game gear. If that one ever shows up, <laughs> I've had that one on pre-order forever. But eventually it might... Uh, show up and of course ninjutsu just announced a, a new smaller mouse which i'm very excited it, we don't know anything other than we've seen a little bit of the shape i assume it has a 3395 but it could be a 3370 i don't know we'll find out hoping it's a 3395 but yeah from here on to the end of the year a lot of exciting mice coming out and i'm looking forward to checking them out and giving reviews so you guys can make a good purchasing decision but at the moment this mouse right here the Fantech Aria X, XD7 has my highest uh, approval rating of, of any mouse right now. So I highly, highly recommend it. Unless you already know the this egg type shape and you are you don't like it. If you're familiar with the Orochi or the G305, G304 uh, shape and you like that, you'll probably love this mouse. Uh, if you are familiar with that shape and you hate it, then maybe you won't like it. But... Like I said, this is not a copy. And, and you know, there is some distractors. That, oh, no, this is just an Orochi V3. That is not true. This does have uh, high-end specs. And the Orochi, this is a, a low-end mouse. Uh, it's a good low-end mouse. And it's one of the best low-end mice on the market, for sure. But Razer usually keeps their models in the, the price segment that it that it started out in. So... The V3, if it ever comes out, it's going to be a low-end mouse. It's probably not going to have a 3395. Or if it does, we'll already have new sensors and the 3395 will be old. So again, th yeah, this mouse is inspired by other shapes, but it is a unique shape that's, that's different. Especially when you put it in your hand, you'll feel the difference. It slides really well on all my mouse pads. The, like I said, the feet are really nice and it's just so balanced. I think your aim will improve with this mouse if you if you do purchase it. Anyways, I could go on and on about how much I love this mouse. It's a very apparent. You probably, if you follow me on Twitter, you, you probably know how much I like this mouse already. And you probably didn't need to see this review. But I appreciate it if you watched it, especially if you watch it all the way through till the end. Uh, Anyways, I, I got a little bit of gameplay footage playing Valorant with this mouse. So, uh, enjoy.
Get down. One kill remaining. See ya. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review and found it informative. If you did, please leave a like. It always helps out. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If not, no big deal. doesn't matter to me. And uh, I got lots more reviews coming out. All kinds of new mice, like I said. I got a bunch of mouse pads I still got to get out with more on the way. Yeah, it's a real exciting time. And I got tons of, of reviews. And I even got some other things like I got a, um, a ceramic pad. And I've got some sapphire dots to review. So, yeah, lots of cool stuff. And... Uh, just keep checking back and I'll have uh, new reviews here real soon. Anyways, that's it. And I'll hopefully see you on the next one. Later.